Peripheral venous cannulation is a key procedure that provides access to the patient's bloodstream through the insertion of a catheter. Indications The indications for performing venous cannulation include the administration of intravenous fluids, blood products, the IV administration of medications, nutrition, chemotherapy, and radiological contrast agents for CTs, MRIs, and other forms of nuclear imaging. Contraindications There are no absolute contraindications, however there are several relative ones. These include the patient having a significant burn or infection at the proposed cannulation site or if the extremity is severely injured. Preparation Wash hands with an antiseptic solution, explain the procedure to the patient and obtain their consent. Ensure the patient is in a comfortable position and their arm is well supported at a height that is easy to access. Set up the equipment on a clean treatment trolley. The equipment needed for cannulation includes antiseptic skin preparation, non-sterile gloves, an IV cannula, an adapter for the cannula device, a tourniquet, sterile gauze, saline solution, a cannuline dressing, and a sharps disposal bin. Put on non-sterile gloves. Check the patency of the lumens of the cannula adapter by flushing each of the lumens with saline solution. Procedure. First, ensure that the patient has no contraindications to the procedure and then search for a suitable vein. Unless inserting the cannula to resuscitate an unstable patient or someone who is at risk of significant bleeding, try to avoid the anti-cubital fossa. If possible, aim to insert the cannula in the dorsum of the hand. After placing the tourniquet, look for a relatively straight vein that lies superficially, as this makes inserting the cannula easier. If you are struggling to find a good vein, there are several things to try. Try gently tapping or rubbing over the vein, asking the patient to lower their arm or using gravity to engorge the vein. If this does not help, then try the other arm and identify a suitable vein. Having identified a suitable vein, clean the area with an antiseptic wipe and leave the antiseptic preparation to air dry. Take the cannulation device and gently slide the needle partially out of the cannula and then back into its original position to ensure there are no defects with the device and the cannula will advance smoothly once the needle is in the vein. When cannulating the dorsum of the hand, ask the patient to make a gentle fist, as this helps to make the skin slightly more taut, hence helping to fix the vein in place. Hold the cannula in the dominant hand while the other hand applies gentle traction to the skin. Insert the cannula needle with the bevel pointing upwards at an angle of 20 degrees from the skin surface. The needle is slowly passed through the vein until there is a give as the needle tip enters the lumen of the vein. At this point, slightly lower the hand to reduce the angle of the cannula. The needle is gently advanced a further 2 to 3 millimeters. At this point, the cannula can be smoothly advanced over the needle by moving the hub of the cannula towards the skin surface. After seeing the flashback, it is important to lower the cannula and reduce the angle of insertion before advancing the needle any further. Otherwise, there is a risk of puncturing the back wall of the vein, which could lead to the formation of a hematoma and ultimately an unsuccessful cannulation. We can release the tourniquet now and remove the needle. If using a larger cannula, pressure over the vein should be applied as the needle is being withdrawn to prevent any spillage of blood. Attach the cannula adapter to the hub of the cannula. Safely dispose of the needle in a sharps bin, flush the device with a sterile saline solution. While doing so, check with the patient if they experience any discomfort and that there is no swelling around the cannula, as this would indicate the cannula is sitting outside of the lumen of the vein and therefore would need to be removed. If the cannula flushes satisfactorily, secure it with adhesive strips before applying a transparent dressing. Additionally, apply an adhesive label with the date of cannula insertion written on it safely dispose of the equipment used for the procedure, wash hands and document the procedure in the patient's notes. Post cannulation. Review the patient post procedure to ensure they remain well and don't have any signs of complications. With regards to managing the cannula, aseptic techniques should be used and regular flushing of the cannula should be undertaken to maintain the patency of the lumen. Keep the cannula and the dressing clean and dry. Also, ensure regular reviews of the candidacy are performed to identify any potential complications. It is typically recommended to keep cannulas in situ for no more than 72 hours to reduce the potential for complications. Complications While peripheral cannulation is a minimally invasive and commonly performed procedure, it is associated with the occurrence of specific complications, which are important to be aware of. 
These complications can be divided into two groups of immediate complications, or those associated with the actual insertion process and late complications, which are those that are associated with the presence of the catheter itself. Immediate complications include being unable to successfully cannulate. Vein bleeding or hematoma formation are typically associated with unsuccessful cannulation attempts. Unsuccessful cannulation may also result in injury to adjacent structures such as blood vessels or nerves. Late complications include patients experiencing significant pain from the presence of the catheter itself, especially when placed around the joint creases. The presence of the catheter may result in inflammation of the vein, which is referred to as phlebitis, which is relatively common and may occur in as many as 45% of cases of peripheral cannulation. The patient may develop thrombosis or occasionally thrombophlebitis, in which the inflamed vessel results in the simultaneous development of a thrombus. While infection and Lyme sepsis occur more commonly with central venous catheters, they may still occur with peripheral cannulas. Late complications are typically associated with non-aseptic technique during the insertion, poor post-procedure management of the device, and also keeping the cannula in situ for a prolonged period. If the catheter becomes displaced, this can lead to extravasion or the administration of fluid and medications outside of the vein, which may lead to pain and swelling. In severe cases, it may even cause compartment syndrome and tissue necrosis, particularly when administering chemotherapy, 